Keith Ruck here at VisionMachinery.org. Well guys, I'm back to working over here on the surface grinder, uh, really just doing some additional steps here to really get this thing fully operational. Uh, we've done a couple of little small jobs on it. I've actually got a grinding job coming up pretty quick that I need to get knocked out. And um, one thing that I'm struggling with a little bit, not really struggling with, but having to deal with, I guess is a better way to say it, is that when I got this, uh, this grinder, it came with this nice, uh, what is that, it's a OS Walker Company magnetic chuck. This thing is uh, eight inches by 24 inches. Nice mag uh, magnetic chuck here for putting things down on. But it didn't have a back rail on this. So normally on these, uh, on these surface grinders, you'll have a little rail that comes up. You can take it on and off, uh, but it basically gives you a surface that you can butt up against and you actually grind it parallel uh, to the machine so that when you're working on things, you can put something up against that little fence or that back rail uh, as a reference uh, to get things lined up. This one didn't have that, it's, it's missing. Um, who knows what happened to it? So I actually contacted uh, OS Walker and they're still in business. They still make uh, mag chucks. I don't think they make this exact model, but they make some this same size uh, even today. And I said, hey, I need a back rail for this thing. Can you provide me with one? And they emailed back and said, yes, uh, we gave, can do it. Here's the part number, cost us $75. Not a bad price, you know. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, when you look at me having to make one, uh, my time and everything else, it's, it's, it's not a bad deal. The catch was, was there was a four week lead time. So it was gonna take them four weeks to, to get one made and shipped out to me. And uh, I just needed a little bit sooner than that. So we're gonna make a back rail today. And uh, to do this, uh, what I've got is just a, it's a piece of angle iron. Uh, I don't know, that's probably eighth inch thick uh, by was that an inch and a quarter or something like that. And I, I took it and actually cut part of this off because it was just, it was too thick uh, for the top. So basically this will be able to go down. There's some sliding, there's some bolts on the back that kind of hold it in place. And uh, we'll be able to bolt that on and hopefully have us a good back rail. Now, um, I just used the bandsaw at the museum. I didn't do it on camera, but we just zipped this off. And it's a little bit thicker than what I need. I'm actually gonna take this over to the mill, I think, and clean this up, because that's not nowhere close to a straight line right now. I also need to mill some slots in here. Uh, there's some holes in the back where you can adjust this thing up and down and it mounts onto, so I need to mill some slots in there for that. So we're gonna be over on the milling machine this morning, getting this done, getting it installed, and then we'll have to actually grind it uh, to get it parallel. So. Let's get going on this project. So we're about ready to get going here and I've got this set up on the mill. Basically, I'm just gonna hold this in the, in the vise. I got a lot sticking out on either end. So I'm probably gonna have to take some light passes. I, I'm sure I'm gonna get some uh, vibration out here, maybe some chatter. Uh, we'll just have to see. Hopefully I can uh, work through it. Uh, we're gonna clean it up over on the surface grinder. So really my, my first uh, plan here is just to get a fairly straight line on here and my, my vice is trammed in, so we should be doing that. Uh, so anyway, let's see how this thing's gonna cut and get her done. All right, we're gonna start by making just a little light pass down through here. Um, I don't know where it's gonna touch and where it's not. This, this cut that I made is not straight. So anyway, I'm gonna speed up a little bit. I can kind of see I got a little low spot right there. And it should start coming in contact here. So that doesn't feel terrible. I'm running at about 450 RPMs on my cutter. I'm using a two flute uh, high speed steel. This is just a Niagara cutter. One that uh, I believe Dennis Nolan gave me to use uh, from Dennis Fourth Works with Niagara. Um, and it's a good sharp bit, so it's, it's going. I can feel some vibration in this, but again, I think if we just take our time, work down through here, uh, we can work around that. It doesn't have to be perfect again because we're going to grind it in uh, to get it perfect. See it touch from about here to here. We pick back up. It's about to drop back off. I can tell there's a little gap there and it's gonna pick back up about right here. There it goes. I 
taking a pretty good bite right there, but we're in the vise, so uh, probably not a lot of vibration there. And it's still touching, that's good. It's getting me a pretty heavy cut. I'm just uh, manually adjusting the uh, feed rate on my automatic feed here. There's just a dial on here that I can dial it in. And uh, when I get to the thinner area, I'm speeding up. And when I'm taking a thick cut, I'm slowing down. I'm gonna slow it way down because uh, it's gonna be taking a big bite out here. I can feel a lot of deflection in this. I'm gonna slow it down some more. just unsupported out here. I don't like it, but uh, if I can get that off, I can take some light passes on the rest of them and I think I'll be all right. I think we got it. I'm gonna go back to the other end. If I'm, if I'm milling back in this direction, I'm gonna be climb milling. I don't wanna be climb milling on this, so we're gonna go back out and uh, start over and go in one direction. All right, I think I'm gonna take about a, I don't know, probably 25,000th uh, cut on this. I think it should handle that just fine. We'll bring you back in a little bit. This is just gonna be some uh, repetitive work through here. So I got this uh, milled flat now, fairly flat. I think there's a little deflection in the ends, but we'll grind it off like I said when we get there. Uh, but all in all, that worked all right. I wasn't real pleased with the, with the flex down here, but uh, taking light passes, it works without having to rig up a super complicated work holding system. So next step here is I need to mill some slots in here. So there are four slots. Uh, there's a 7 16 inch bolt that goes through this. I think I'm gonna do is do half inch slots. That gives me a little bit of play in here. Uh, a little bit of adjustment up and down, side to side, just to make sure everything lines up. Uh, the first one needs to be about two inches from the end and then they're six and three quarter inches apart. And like I said, four slots across here. Um, I really, again, work holding is the challenge here. I'm just gonna come in here. We'll cut the first one. Uh, I'll probably move this out. We'll index off of this one, use a DRO uh, to come over. And uh, it's gonna be a little, because of the way I'm having to hold this, I really can't do it all in one clamping. I'm gonna have to do multiple clampings, but I think we can make it work. And since that slot's gonna be a little bit oversized, uh, we got a little wiggle room in there, so I think we'll be fine. So let's uh, get down here. Slot seems to be one inch deep from uh, end to end. Uh, the first one is not super critical. I've just got a mark on here about where I want it to be. So we'll get that roughly where it needs to be. And I think right there will be fine. Let's see what happens here. We'll raise the table up. come in here and I'm just gonna to touch off and I'll measure my depth of one inch using the DRO. I'm just gonna zero that out. And we're gonna plunge in.
one inch. Let's get the next one set up. We'll do that one. So what I've done is I've moved the piece out. So I got my slot where it's going to be close to the vise here. And I've lined back up on the original one that I cut. And I just, you know, you can run it in and out. It's, it's pretty well on center. Now I'm going to use my digital readout up here to uh, dial in six and three quarter inches. One, two, three inches, four inches, five inches, six inches, and getting close, seven, five, oh, was what we're after here. Right there. So that should be online. I got a mark back there and just for some assurance and we are in line. So we'll go ahead and cut this next one. All right, we're touching there. I'm gonna go in one inch. All right, we'll use the same process on the other two slots and we should have this thing ready to bolt on over there. So here we go, guys. Um, all off the middle machine now. I've got my slots in there. We got our fence rail on here. It sticks out probably, uh, it's probably a quarter of an inch or so. And I've got my bolts back here in the back and it just slides right down on there, just like what we want. So uh, I'm gonna kind of snug these up by hand. And I'm gonna get a wrench, we'll tighten those up. And voila, uh, once one back rail for the surface grinder. Uh, I think that's gonna work just fine for me, um, you know, I, I'm curious as to how the one built by um, the manufacturer, if it's made out of steel or cast iron, I may give them a call. If it's a cast iron fence, uh, I might just spend the 75 bucks and get that to put it on here. But if it's a, just a steel fence like this, I'll probably just stick with this one. So uh, I think it's gonna work fine for me. So next step is, is we need to go ahead and grind uh, this end to get it where it is parallel with the machine, uh, with the, the, the way the machine operates. And uh, to do that, I'm gonna have to put me a, a special grind on this wheel and I need to see if I even can do that today. Uh, I'm not sure that I have what I need. Uh, all right guys, update here on this uh, project. So we're trying to grind the back rail back here and uh, tell you where I'm at and what's going on and what we're gonna do. So. What I need to do is I need to dress on the back side of this wheel a little bit of a relief, a little bit of just an angle in there, just a couple of degrees, so that when I'm grinding, I'm only grinding on the very outside rim. So, you know, it kind of makes it more like a cup wheel uh, rather than just having this back edge here. I need to dress that back back there. Uh, not a big deal if you have this tool right here, which is an angle and, uh, or, or excuse me, a radius and tangent dresser, I think they call this. Uh, but this is for dressing wheels. You can dress a radius on it or a concave or convex, whatever. But it also, you can set an angle and, and grind a particular angle on there. And that's what I'm needing it for, is to just put a little bit of a angle on the back of that wheel. So I bought this uh, from a gentleman, uh, Jack Hoying actually gave me a really good deal on it. And, uh, but it's got a couple little issues, nothing terribly major. Uh, but when he sent it to me, and I think when he got it, it was actually missing a little part. And it's not a major part, but it is a major part to me right this minute. So I'm gonna zoom you in here and kind of show you what we gotta do this thing to make it work uh, before I can do that. So if you look at this, there's this little piece here that your 
diamond goes into. And that's another issue I've got. I don't have the right size of diamond. The diamond that I use is a little bit too big. This takes a 3 8 inch diameter shank. So I'm gonna have to order a diamond number one. Uh, but really the kind of the big deal, and it's not a huge deal, but again, I don't have it, so it's a big deal right this moment, is that this piece is in a little dovetail uh, groove, and it's made where you can uh, do a real fine adjustment uh, up and down like this. And the way that's done is, is there's these two little pieces on here. Let me see if I can turn that around so you can see. So there's one here and one here. And what this is, this is a little cam. And it is made where you can turn, twist this thing around, and you can fine adjust it. And there's a rod that goes through this hole. If you look right here, there's a hole that goes through here. There's a rod that goes through there and that engages on either side of this cam. And again, you can do a fine adjustment with that. When I got this, the rod was gone. It's a, uh, I think 13 millimeter, just a little over a half inch. Um, and I don't have a piece of stock that I can just put in there and make this work. So I've ordered myself a piece of drill rod um, that will go in here. And once I get that, no big deal, but out of the box, unfortunately, uh, it's not gonna work today. And then again, the other thing, like I said, I gotta get the proper uh, diameter diamond to go in here. I don't have the proper diamond. Turn that mag back on. But once I get that, I can set, there's a, there's a scale up here. I can set this back angle, you know, to whatever I want it to be and lock it in place. And there's a little mechanism here that will allow me to go up and down at that angle. So my, what I'm gonna do is I'll set this probably a degree or two in, put my diamond in there, and we'll come in here in the back side of this wheel and just address that in there. So that's where we're at, guys. Um, you know, I'm pretty much dead in the water right now for getting this thing finished. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit frustrating. Uh, you know, I'm in the process of kind of getting this surface grinder set up and usable, and it seems like every time I need to do something here at the shop, I have to work on something, get something working, find something that I don't have, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which is just, uh, you know, the, the challenges of setting up a new shop, uh, which is basically what I'm doing. So for now, uh, we're gonna put this rest of this video on hold. Uh, we'll come back in a later video. We'll get this uh, little uh, dresser all fixed up like it's need to be. Uh, we'll show dressing that wheel and uh, we'll get this back piece put in here. And as soon as that's done, the next thing I got to do is grind a special cutter, which I'm really excited about doing. It's going to be kind of fun. We're going to be using a, uh, a double sign plate, doing a compound angle on here and, and cutting a, actually grinding a thread, a special threading tool. And I think you guys will enjoy that. But like I said, it's just every time I come out here to work on this project, I run into another little snag, but we'll get past it. So for now, that'll be a wrap. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you on the next video.